Gunboss Games! <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Gin here with a new guide for League of Legends and a new microphone, as you might be hearing right now. I really like this one. It's a Yeti. Um, given we're talking about League of Legends, I'm thinking of calling it Willem. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. And let me know how it sounds. I want to know. I'm still tweaking the details on it. Might be too loud, might be too soft. Let me know. Anywho, today's topic is the role of the jungler. This one's gonna be big, so get some paper out and get ready to take notes. First, some of you who are new may be asking, what is a jungler? And indeed, what is the jungle? Well, the jungle, if you take a look at the map here, is the area in between the lanes, inhabited by neutral monsters. Ignore the fact that this is more a forest than a jungle, colloquialism dictates otherwise. The role of the jungler is many faceted, but their primary, most basic purpose is to take advantage of these neutral monsters, killing them for gold and XP. This allows your team to fully benefit from all gold and XP sources on the map, and putting one more lane ahead in levels. That is to say, if there is a jungler, then you allow your team one more lane with only one champion in it. Since XP is normally shared, that one player will level up faster than if there were two. In addition to basic jungling, the jungler is also generally responsible for controlling objectives, ganking, and a large chunk of warding around the map. First, however, let's look at the jungle itself. Each side's jungle consists of five camps. Blue buff, wolves, wraiths, red buff, and golems. The blue buff camp contains the ancient golem, who holds the buff, and two young lizards, who toss tiny little fireballs at you. They're pretty pitiful, but actually quite important. We'll talk about why later. The blue buff itself grants mana and energy regeneration, as well as cooldown reduction. At level 1, the entire camp will give you enough experience points to reach level 2. The golem, however, hits quite hard, so be careful here. The wolves are the fastest moving and fastest attacking camp. Though their attack damage is low, they have a pretty high critical strike chance that could ruin you if you aren't careful. The giant wolf grants you a small percentage of your missing health and mana when you kill it. The wraith camp is generally considered the weakest. That's why there's four of them. One big one and three small ones. Like the wolves, the big one will grant you some health and mana when you kill it. Interestingly, the large wraith has more armor than anything else in the non-buff camps, so you should focus it down first. This is especially true with junglers who have some form of area of effect damage. Dr. Mundo's Burning Agony, for example, can just about kill all of the small ones while he's busy attacking the big one. The red buff camp contains the Lizard Elder, who holds the buff, and two young lizards, exactly like the blue buff camp. The red buff makes your basic attack stronger, dealing additional damage over time, and slowing the target for a few seconds. Just like the blue buff again, clearing the camp will let you reach level 2. And finally, the two golems are probably the least used camp in an initial run. Why? Well, they hit really hard and they have a lot of health. If you can best them though, the reward is well worth it, as they give quite a lot of XP and gold for your trouble, but not quite as much as a buff camp. Fortunately, the larger one gives a health and mana bonus just like the giant wolf and the wraith. Each of the non-buff or small camps spawns for the first time at 1 minute and 55 seconds. When killed, they will respawn after 1 minute, except the wraiths who respawn after 50 seconds. Note, however, respawn timers on all camps do not start until after the entire camp is dead. The buff camps spawn at 1 minute and 55 seconds, and respawn after 5 minutes. Note that 15 second gap there, we'll come back to it in a moment. Your first clearing of the jungle is your most important. It sets the general tone of the game and ensures the stability of future clears. Once you're through the first time, everything should be smooth sailing as far as clearing the jungle again. When you start, you have to decide which side of the jungle you want to begin on, or more accurately, which buff do you want to get first. The blue buff, with its cooldown reduction and bonus mana, will help you clear the jungle much faster. Some champions who use a lot of mana at early levels, such as a Moo Moo and Fiddlesticks, essentially have to start at the blue buff, or else their clearing will be extremely slow. Starting with red buff allows for earlier ganking. The slow makes it a lot easier for you to land kills, and in some cases, if you're using an auto attack based champion, it will help you clear the jungle faster than blue would. This is especially true of champions who do not use mana, such as Shivana or Lee Sin. In either case, do not start the jungle at the buff. 
So many people do, and it's really frustrating to watch people waste time when they could be getting a head start. If you're going for blue, clear the wolves first. If you're going for red, kill the wraiths first. It's easy, and you have 15 seconds before the buff spawns to do it. This is especially true if your team's leashing for you, which they always should. While in previous seasons, this involved some trickery to get the monsters to chase them, but since monsters now attack the closest target, all they have to do is poke the monster a few times without killing them while you tank and attack it. If they lose one or two creeps because of it, so what? The jungler getting a good start is much more important, as it will help them out later. For a clear of the jungle, starting with blue, you should, as mentioned, begin with the wolves and then take out the blue buff. Next, as you switch sides of the jungle, are the wraiths. From here, it's decision making time. If you did not have to use smite to take out the blue buff and you have a good chunk of health, then this is a perfect opportunity to clear the red buff. If you have used it, but are in a good shape, you can go ahead and kill the golems. Lastly, if you are not so confident, or you have an AOE ability that lets you clear a group quickly, go back to the wolves, who should spawn as you arrive. Then, in either of those last two cases, take out the red buff, followed by the race again, who you may have to wait a moment to respawn for. If you were able to take out the red buff straight away, you can go and clear either of the other camps we mentioned for your last few points. As is, a clear like this should have you at level 4 and ready to gank with both buffs intact. For a red clear, go for the race and then red as I said. From here, you could do a level 2 gank if you'd like, but in continuing the clear, make your way to the golems and take them out. As you head to the blue side of the jungle, the wraiths will respawn and you can take them out easily. From here, it's just following a line to take out wolves and then the blue buff. Again, you should come out at level 4 ready to gank. In most cases, a jungler should start the game with a hunter's machete for extra damage in the jungle and 5 health potions. You can do it with other combinations of things, such as cloth armor and health potions, and sometimes even a longsword and health potions. And if you've learned that you don't need as quite as many health potions to clear, you could even start with some wards. Experiment and figure out what you can do. However, I recommend always experimenting by yourself before doing it in a real game. It doesn't take more than 5 minutes to create a custom game and try clearing the jungle. If you can't clear it all without assistance, you probably shouldn't do it in a real game. General rule of thumb. Few more rules of thumb for you. Or thumbs? Rules of thumbs? Sounds right. This applies to most, but not all junglers necessarily. And in particular, it's stuff you grab outside of a game. Flat armor seals are useful on any jungler. Monsters only have auto attacks, so this will save you a lot of health. They're standard on basically everyone and they're really cheap. As for masteries, summoners resolve for the smite buff, and then tough skin and bladed armor make your jungle both faster and safer. Speaking of smite though, always take it. Even if you think you can jungle without it, that's not the point. Not only does it make it easier for you to clear the jungle with more health, it also gives you gold when you use that mastery like I mentioned. It counts as a spell for the purposes of spell vamp, which is innate on some champions like uh, Lee Sin, and, most importantly, it lets you secure and steal objectives. It does a thousand damage when you're level 18. This is really powerful for getting your team Dragon and Baron, as well as stealing buffs or securing them for yourself. Go ahead and not take it if you dare. Just don't cry to me when the other jungler comes and steals all your stuff. On the topic of stealing things, let's talk about counter jungling. That is to say, stealing the enemy jungler's camps. You can, of course, go onto the other side of the map and steal whole camps from them, but that isn't necessarily optimal all the time. It's actually far better to steal only part of the camp. For example, you might go in and kill the large wraith, but not all of the smaller wraiths. The large wraith has most of the golden XP, so the enemy is left with only the tiny amount the small ones give. The large one won't respawn until the whole camp has died, and only then does the respawn timer start ticking. This is where the small lizards I mentioned earlier come into play. The buff camps take 5 whole minutes to respawn. If you steal the buff and leave the lizards, the enemy is denied from getting it for much longer. On the other hand, if you want to steal the whole camp, do so. You can then keep track of when it will next spawn to steal it again. If you're only taking part of a camp though, think about what effect it will have on the enemy. How much time will they have to spend clearing the camp of small monsters? 
If it's a Mumu, for example, he can clear full camps all at once with his AoE abilities, so leaving more than one monster alive would just give them more stuff. If it's someone like Jin Zhao, though, who has mostly just an auto attack for damage, it will be more of their time and energy wasted clearing the camp again. You can also use opportunities like this to ward the enemy jungle. This will help your team keep track of them, but it also gives you the chance to steal from them even more and even get a kill on them. Say for example you ward the enemy red buff. If you then spot them taking it, you can run in to smite steal it and then kill them for it. Free stuff! As the jungler, you should try and carry a few wards with you as often as possible, or Riggle's Lantern, which gives free wards and helps with your jungling. The jungler wanders around the map more than any other role, so you have a great opportunity to ward where your allies can't go to for whatever reason. While you're wandering, you can also gank lanes. The jungler should try and help any lane they can, be it one that's in trouble and behind, or one that's ahead and they want to get more ahead. Ganking is arguably easiest for a jungler. It's very difficult to know a jungler's whereabouts at all times, but a laner who tries to gank can more easily be called as missing or spotted on the way. Ganking is a topic that deserves its own video, but for now remember that you should always try to get between the enemy and their escape route. If your ally has pushed to the enemy tower, it's probably not a good time to gank. Also, when ganking, be sure to make sure your allies are aware by pinging the target. If they don't see you coming and you jump in, the gank's likely gonna fail. Finally, let me talk about buffs. After the first clear, the jungler is much less reliant on buffs. They should generally keep the red for themselves during the laning phase as is most useful in a ganking situation, but the blue buff can and very often should be donated. Usually, this goes to the AP caster in the mid lane, as they often expend a lot of mana when trying to cast their spells, but consider who on your team can use it best. If you're counter jungling well, you can even donate the enemy's buffs. Just make sure your allies are aware when you try to do this by pinging and telling them in chat. And try to have the buff monster low enough on health already when your allies come and get it. The less time they have to spend out of lane, the better. All of this combines to make the jungler a very important member of the team, a leader in action throughout the game by controlling buffs and providing ganks. It's a lot to stay on top of and your allies will expect a lot from you, but if you think you can handle the pressure, then jungling is very rewarding and very fun. And with that, we're done! Thanks for watching everyone! Let me know what you thought below, hit the like button if you found this useful, and subscribe for future content. Till next time, I've been Gin and you've been watching me talk about a video game.